In this three-part video series, I want to show you the steps involved in creating a professional template for non-disclosure agreement. Welcome back to Solisan's channel. It's Sofian here from Solisan Consulting, a digital transformation agency on a mission to help investment firms grow by automating paperwork. In this three-part video series, I want to show you the steps involved in creating a professional template for non-disclosure agreement. The reason I've broken this tutorial into three different videos is because I want to make a point. You shouldn't jump into DocuSign to create your template. Rather, you should analyze your document and make it compatible with the software to improve the experience of your users, signers, and this will actually save you plenty of time down the track. So in this first video, I'll show you how to prepare the document. In the second one, you will learn how to create the template. And in the third, I'll show you how to test the template, um, adjust the field so that uh, the end result is super polished and move the template to your production account. So let's get started. And if you're new to DocuSign and don't know where to start, I recommend that you download my DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet to help you navigate the template creation process and understand what field you need to use on your documents. It's totally free and it helped a lot of my students. So I want you to have it. You can click on the link in the description of this video to download it now. To create a template for our NDA, the first thing we need to do is to understand the workflow of the document. And that's the case with any document template you create on DocuSign. So how does this document work? Well, first the disclosing party will send this document to the receiving party who will then to fill out the fields that we can see uh, all here as well as uh, sign. And so once the um, receiving party has completed the document and signed it, the document should route to the VP of sales of the disclosing party for counter signature just right here. And so once all parties have uh, signed, then they should all receive a copy of the document. But before we um, create the template in DocuSign, we first need to optimize the document so that it's DocuSign ready. So what do I mean by DocuSign ready? Well, documents that were filled out on paper aren't optimized for electronic signature. And so there are small little things that you want to change to make them uh, look more polished and work better on e-signature. By inefficiencies, what I mean is looking for ways to improve the flow and look of the document. So for example, here, um, because this document was um, to date prepared and signed and, and managed in um, a paper and manual format, we have three fields for the day. It's not useful at all for DocuSign because DocuSign will just need one field to add the date. So we don't need to have those three fields here. So we can uh, basically do is remove this altogether. We don't need this anymore. Um, another thing we want to do is we want to go through each field basically. Each and field is a space on, docu on a document where you're expecting an input. So we want to go through each of those fields to understand whether we're going to have enough space, not enough space, or if things can be improved. So for example, here, um, the disclosing party, sorry, the receiving party after adding their date, the date um, of their signature, will need to add the name, the legal company name, the address, uh, the email of the person who's representing the um, receiving party, and the contact person, the, the name of that person as well. So I don't think we need to uh, change this much. One thing we could potentially do is add another line for the address in case they have a long, uh, a long address. So we can just go ahead and insert an extra uh, row below just in case. So we have address line one and address line two. So that looks good so far. And now let's take a look at the signature field. And if you're looking for a partner to assist your business with your DocuSign implementation, you can find the link in the description of this video to book a strategy call with one of our specialists. Now for the signature placeholder, we can first see that it's broken over two pages, which doesn't look great. So what we want to do is we want to insert a page break to make sure that the signature isn't uh, the signature table is not going to break over two pages and now that that's done um, let's take a look at the actual fields 
So we've got the uh, signature of the person that's expected here and then the name and title. Um, in DocuSign, it's not recommended uh, to share the same signature, um, sorry, the same uh, line for two different types of data. Just because DocuSign doesn't have control over the length of the text um, that gets entered. So potentially the name and title of the person who is signing here as uh, sorry, sign, so the disclosing party might overlap. And so that's something we don't wanna do. So you want to, what we wanna do is we wanna improve that signature placeholder here. So what would be ideal would be to have a column for a disclosing party and a column for the receiving party. Uh, so what we might do is just create a new table Okay, so the document looks good. Now that it's ready to be uploaded to DocuSign, I'm just going to save it and keep it as a Word doc. And I'm also going to create a copy as a PDF. The reason you always want to create your PDFs, um, you, want, you want to save your document as PDFs and not as Word before you import them into DocuSign is because sometimes, depending on the version you're using in Word, when you upload documents into DocuSign, the formatting might be different and also uh, some information might be on, this, on, on, on the next page, there might be an extra page and um, it's just better practice to save the document as PDF because the PDF you will actually see on your computer and the one that DocuSign will read will render the exact same uh, formatting in the end. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. In the next part, I will show you how to build the template with the document we've just optimized. I'll see you then. Ciao.